The very first piece of artwork that I ever sold for money was to a kid named Toby from my middle school, Tobias. He wanted a sick ass scorpion tattoo. So I went home that night, grabbed my pencils and whipped out this just twisted looking cartoonified scorpion with poison dripping off of its tail. It was freaking gnarly. I can't say whether or not the guy ever got the tattoo, but I got a sweet 15 bucks out of that deal. I learned at a very young age, because I grew up very poor, I learned at a very young age, you have to be of service to people to make money. And uh, what I started doing was mowing lawns because that was just the easiest way to make money. And there were people who had lawns. I grew up in the Midwest, huge yards. The older people don't want to go out there and mow the lawn after 30 or 40 years of doing it every few weeks. So I provided a service. The same is true with your art. And this has been a discussion that's been going on a lot in my Discord community. If you want to join and talk about art and, and overall improve your skills, head on over to the Discord. The link is in the description below. But one of the things that I found was that I've read a lot of books about marketing and I've read a lot of books about how to sell uh, product and the irony and the interesting thing is is to summarize all of them it all boils down to this D stop trying to sell your art the more I get phone calls from some auto insurance or warranty company trying to convince me to extend my warranty the less I want it the less I even want to answer my phone it's annoying when somebody's trying to sell you something you don't want uh, the same is true with people who are constantly trying to get you to buy their comic trying to get you to buy their art just stop just stop trying to sell your your stuff and that creates a bit of a dilemma because as a creator, you're like, well, how do I even, what the heck? How do I get people to buy what I'm making? How do I, how do I convince them that it's what they want? Well, the answer is not in how to psychologically trick them into making a purchase. No, no, no. You have to think of it in reverse. Stop thinking about your cool story idea that you want to tell for your thing and start thinking about what's missing from a market. Stop thinking about how you can convince that company to give you a job and start thinking about how you can be somebody who provides what they need for their customers. Get really good at making that thing that's missing from a market that they're already clamoring for. They're already saying, hey, we really want this type of a thing and make that type of a thing and make it very good. Part two of that strategy is to make sure that those people who are looking for what it is that you're doing know that you exist. They know that your product, what it stands for, what it represents. So your job is to think more about how you can provide something to people who already want it and make it available to them in a very clear and easy way for them to purchase. There is no shortage of opportunities. There is only a shortage of vision. If you start looking around for ways that you can create a product that people are already looking for, you will find yourself with more than enough money and opportunities. I will give you a few examples and this will flood these markets, but I will give you a few examples. Uh, for instance, a good place to start is in the D&D community. Tabletop gaming is blowing up. It's still popular. It's been blowing up for about a decade now. And there are a lot of people that are getting into real tangible, you know, face-to-face -face RPGing. And one of the things that they're constantly looking for is like a cool way to show off to their friends. Look at my character. I got a cool drawing done by an artist. And then when they slap that image down on the table, everybody gets to go, oh, so that's what I'm supposed to be envisioning when you're playing your character. And that's something that will infinitely be needed. You can make a good little chunk of side cash just doing artwork for these communities. And you, if you're trying to sell that on Twitter or something, you're gonna have a tougher time than if you go into forums or discords or you get involved in communities of RPG players, of D&D &D players. So find out where all of those players, those dungeon masters are hanging out. Find out where all those players are hanging out. Where are they going? Find those communities, find those discords, those forums, and start posting some of your other commissions and some of your artwork that you're doing that fits into that universe. In your profile and on every post, make sure that you have a clear pricing sheet laid out with every image, it says where they can get their own character design done from you. You can actually build a little niche there. So the idea here is to find an existing market, find an existing niche, an existing market of people who actually make purchases. Be cautious about this because sometimes people, artists, will get obsessed with making a product that nobody wants. Or the people who are into that are used to getting it for free, so why would they purchase it? 
All right, here's another one. A lot of authors are not necessarily artists, uh, but if you're an artist and you really enjoy painting sci-fi or big muscly romantic hero types, well, and hey, guess what, man? There's a huge market out there for artists to create book covers for authors who are selling their original self-published books on Amazon or something. And they have stock photo covers. You could make you could be making artwork illustrations for novel covers. Something like 80 to 90% of the decision to purchase a novel is based on the cover. So they are desperately looking for really appealing looking artwork that are that's sci-fi or fantasy or whatever it is, whatever your fa favorite specialty is, find these indie authors and offer your services. Be very clear about your pricing and show them examples of exactly what they would get. Uh, not doing it for you? Okay, here's another one. Uh, there's a lot of artists out there that create artwork for these gaming YouTube podcasts and um, and commentators and reviewers, and they'll do custom artwork for those guys. And they always need flashy art because art is what gets people to click on YouTube videos. Well, art always gets more clicks than just a text thing, you know, or even just a person's face. So yeah, like reach out to YouTubers who need banner art and things like that. Like you can build a little side hustle just providing a service to uh, people who are already looking for art. This is one of the things that I think a lot of artists find when they start going to comic book conventions, for example, is that uh, a lot of times people want, maybe don't want to necessarily buy your original character that they've never heard of, but they will commission you to draw Spider-Man or they will commission you to draw a Star Wars character, for example. And so I know a lot of artists at comic cons, and if you go to comic cons, you've seen this, they start drawing pinups of existing characters because there's familiarity. It's like DC already made sure that everybody Everybody knows who Batman is and you've got a really unique and interesting take on Batman so it's getting a lot of people to stop at your booth you know that sort of thinking like going to comic cons and selling your your art is a great way for you to understand why people buy what they buy and you see how all of that is like there are people who are already looking for art they might not be looking for you or your original comic book idea or your original um, character design or whatever they, but they might still just really need art for their purposes and for their thing. In fact, it's even better if their business is contingent upon them having great art and you can provide that great art, then their business is contingent upon you. If hiring you means they will make more money and make their customers more happy, then you are an easy hire. You are, they're going to throw whatever you want at you. One of the things that I did early on uh, when I was starting my art career is that I turned down nothing. I took every gig that came my way. If it paid 500 bucks, I'd do it. If it paid a hundred bucks, I'd do it. Back in the day, I would take every single job that came my way, no matter what it was. And eventually also, by the way, your network of people start to reach out. Uh, so I was doing jobs for these comedians who ultimately ended up becoming quite famous. Uh, but while they were pitching television show ideas, they needed art. So I was just getting commissioned a few hundred bucks here and there to design artwork for some of these uh, comedians <laughs> who were pitching their TV shows in like the early 2000s and they would scramble together an extra few hundred bucks and they'd, you know, pay a, an artist like myself to work on artwork for their next pitch. And I got to learn, you know, how to create a pitch for an animated show, for example. And then my point is, is that sometimes those people end up going on to work on network television shows, and then you're getting into bigger jobs because you've been with them since the beginning. And a lot of times people neglect to invest their time into the small fries. And sometimes the small fries end up turning into big fries. Okay. So always expand your network, be very sociable, get out there and, and try to be as, as personable as possible and actually meet people on FaceTime or in person, if at all possible, it can really change your perspective perspective on who they are and what their goals are and how you can better create more content for them. And also don't just be like a name through an email that they send in, you know, descriptions to get an order from. It's important for your clients to see you as a person too. And then they're much more likely to take you along for the ride if you have a relationship with them. And also if they see you as a person, then they're much less likely to screw you over. And, uh, on the, when it comes time to actually paying the invoice. And that's a totally different topic. I don't want to go into how to protect yourself. That can be really rough early on in your career. 
And all of this is like stuff that if you're just getting started with your, your art career and you're seeing this like an RPG and you're trying to level up, it's like, yeah, this is the stuff where you're just going around gathering quests, those early stages, you're a low level. So you gotta, you're not going to get those jobs on the big, huge new TV show or the big, huge new video game from some huge company, but you're going to be building experience and you're going to be establishing in your own mind that you're doing art for money. You're doing it as a job and you're creating, you're providing a service to people who are hiring artists. And it's not always what you want out of it. And that can be very hard for some beginner artists. And that's, this is really the turning point where some artists are just not going to make it. And some artists are going to go, oh yeah, okay, I get it. I can get paid to do the, the artwork the way that somebody else wants me to do it. You have to see it from the perspective of the producer, of the developer. One of the core things that I think led to my success in my art career is that I always had an attitude of whenever I saw something, I always thought I can do that. I can break that down and I can dissect it and I can replicate that and I can add to it. So when Capcom was hiring for a Maximo sequel, I was like, I can do that art style. Here's some examples. When uh, Blizzard was hiring for World of Warcraft, I was like, that's my jam. I can, I can understand, break down, and replicate that art style and expand on it. On Diablo, same thing, quite a leap, but I'll tell you, I was obsessed with dissecting and breaking down how things work and replicating it and then being able to explain it. And that actually helped me with my YouTube channel and my art tutorials as well, because I can teach people how to do more photorealistic art as well as more stylized kind of art, because I've done that on games that I've shipped. And all of that stemmed from this psychology of thinking in terms of how can I be of better service to potential employers who have a need. They have a need. They needed artists to create environments for those games. I was able to do that. I didn't go in and think, oh, I'm going to change the art style of these games. I didn't go in and think, oh, I'm going to change the direction of things. No, no, no. It wasn't what I wanted to do. I mean, I found a middle ground. So I was never really horribly miserable doing it. I enjoy the process of learning and dissecting. So for me, it was really just an extension of who I became. And now after many, many years of being of service to other people, now I finally get to be the person who gets to make what it is that I want to be making because I don't longer need those jobs. But if you're in that position where you're still trying to lock down your career and establish your art career and start selling your art, the biggest, most important rule that you can carry for yourself is to be of service to those people who are hiring or of those customers who have a demand. There's there's something missing in that market and you can be the person who can provide that better than anyone else. And you have to be able to show that in your work. The irony is you don't even have to be the best. You don't have to be the best to get paid. I wasn't the best bootleg Thai artist when I was 15 years old, but I made a few bucks and that helped to establish my art career. And again, when I'm 15, I learned, oh, I don't get to draw whatever I want on a Thai. I've got to draw what they told me to draw in the style that they told me to draw it in. The sooner you learn that, the sooner you're employable as an artist or a creative. You could do your own thing on the side, you know? You can draw whatever you want on the side and try to build out an audience for that by being consistent and constantly posting in a community that's looking for that type of stuff. But if you're looking to get paid and really establish your art career, it's important to look at a market that's in need of art. Don't go to people who have no interest in art or buying art and try desperately to convince them that they need to value what it is that you do. Instead, focus all of your attention on trying to find an underserved market and serve them. Now, keep in mind that if you studied your fundamentals and you're a competent artist and you're a professional and you communicate fairly well, then there's probably some way that you could be selling your art right now that would make a good amount of money. You have to be open-minded to that. Don't cut off those opportunities. I've seen far too many artists who say, nah, I won't do that thing, even though I know it would sell. I'm gonna do the difficult thing because that's what my art is about, man. I'm an artist. I don't recommend you fall into that trap. I recommend that you use the thing that people actually want from you to make enough money so that you can do the thing that you love on the side. That's what helps you to build your leverage so that eventually you get to just transition over to doing more of what you want to do. And then when you've got that kind of leverage that at that point you can say, ah, I charge $20,000 per painting, take it or leave it. If they say, yeah, that's crazy. That's too much. You can say, okay, well, you know, I can recommend somebody else that'll do it for cheaper, but uh, I don't work for that cheap. 
Or maybe you reach the point where you're taking jobs not based on how much it pays you, but because of what it gets you in your life experience or if it gets you closer to your ultimate bigger goal. And that's one last thing that I wanna cover here is to make sure that you have a plan for where it is going. For example, if you find a way to make some income from your art and you scope that out and go, well, 10 years from now, I might be able to charge double. Uh, it, that's not enough of a big payday, I don't think, for it to be worth it for you to put all of your energy into that. If it gets you by, then start building something that has a greater potential upside in the long term on the side put in a little bit of extra time on that other thing. And also maybe there are ways that you can speed up the service that you're providing. You know, you have to ask yourself that as well. Can you hire on some additional help to create more content more rapidly? Or perhaps you just need to get my Photoshop cheat box, but bam. Finding the balance between art and business is always gonna be a bit of a challenge and it's always gonna be a bit of a contentious topic. I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people that are get pretty angry about even the things I'm saying here, even though these are totally reasonable things in the business world. To many artists, some of what I'm even talking about here feels like way too much of a compromise. You may get frustrated with that, but at the same time, there are other artists out there that are gonna ace this. They're gonna love it and they're gonna end up having a lot more creative freedom in the long run because they sacrificed a little bit of their creative freedom earlier in their career. Because all in all, art is, why would anybody buy any of it? Well, for a lot of businesses, they can't make their product without good art. So I found that the easiest way to make money from your art, the easiest people to sell your art to are people who need art to make their customers happy. And for that, the video game industry has been very good to me. And uh, now that I'm retiring from it and I'm just starting my own studio to make my own games, I'm ready to pass the torch. I'm ready to pass on all the knowledge and information from my 20 years of making video games in my workshops. If you wanna know why companies hire an artist to design an environment, my environment concept art workshops are gonna help you to develop the skills and the presentation to convince them that you're the artist that they should be hiring to design their next environments. And for all you hobbyists out there that aren't quite ready for the big leagues, for the pros, well, hey man, I'm here every week with more content like what you're watching. So do please remember to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you have any questions, drop those in the comments. I do get ideas for my videos from your comments. And if you've got any other suggestions that might help out other artists in getting their first paying gigs for their art, please do leave those suggestions in the comments below to help out those other artists. And dudes, until next video, I'll see you then. A ciao.